Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we're in front of the Stephen King shelves, so it is a Stephen King themed, themed video. But we have an addition today in Peter Straub, uh, because they wrote The Talisman together. That cover is, is hot garbage. I'm just going to say that right now. Um, if you are watching this review, which is going to be spoiler free, this cover is garbage. But, at the same time, you have this cover, which is just just pure 70s, which is odd because the book came out in the 80s. I guess it was a holdover from the, from, from the 70s. Anywho, but uh, yeah, we're going to talk about this version. It's the same version. Uh, it's just easier to hold, and I like to gesticulate wildly so you guys get to see all the gesticulations. Um, I'm going to just gesticulations with the book. Anyways, um, I, I'm gonna I, I I'm gonna warn you up front that I don't like this book um, as much as I, I would say it's probably in my lead top twenty. Can I the bottom twenty Stephen King books? Um, and the reason for that is again this is gonna be spoiler free, but we are gonna be talking about some issues vaguely. Um, the issue here throughout the entire book is Peter Straub. Um, now, there, there's, a lot, there, there's a lot to unpack with the whole uh, Peter Straub and Stephen King uh, relationship. Uh, they, Stephen King called Peter Straub up and, uh, because he thought Peter Straub writes like him. So he thought it would be good to try and collaborate with Straub. Um, and they collaborated and then after The Talisman came out, Stephen King came out and said he'd never uh, collaborate again. Since then, he's collaborated a second time with Peter Straub with The Black House, and he's collaborated with Richard Chismar, and he's collaborated with Owen, his son, Owen. Um, there, is some, there is some discussion in the community about whether or not Stephen King had any hand in Sleeping Beauties or... Uh, Gwendy's button box, uh, but I think there is a is a there's a part of him in each, even though it is very, very minute. Um, so getting into the talisman, why why do I feel that Peter Straub is the problem with this book? First off, it's it's a running joke in the community that all the boring parts were written by Peter Straub. That's not the case. Um, there's a there's a lot of boring, soulless, just bland. It's just, it's not fun to read prose, um, and that stuff is usually Peter Straub. The way you can tell is he'll use, he uses adverbs more than King ever did. Um, there's also, there's missing that element of one-on-one uh, -on -one talk with the reader that Stephen King does so effortlessly, um, where, where he'll say something like, uh, can I get an amen, or can you dig it, something like that in the narrative to let you know this is a Stephen King book. And of course that stuff can be faked, but Peter Straub isn't that type of author. He's not that type of guy, period. Uh, he is far too uh, egotistical to pretend to be someone else. So Peter Straub's stuff is, uh, it is definitely easier to find, well no, I would, I would say you, you can definitely tell what sections Peter Straub wrote and what sections King wrote. Uh, but not all of Peter Straub's sections are boring and not all of Stephen King's sections are exciting. Um, one of the problems here is you constantly feel throughout the entire middle of the book as if neither one of these authors have any idea where the hell they're going. They know they want to write a long book, um, they don't want to step on each other's toes, that there's a there's a sense of safety and security to it that I usually don't find in the balls to the wall uh, narrative that Stephen King is used to writing. On top of that, Peter Straub is so so insanely vague with his stuff that it's that it, it it's jarring to the point because it, he'll go on and on and on talking about this thing and what he could be alluding to, and then Stephen King will just fly in and he'll be like. Death, destruction, murder, mayhem, um, <clears throat> and to 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 listen to Straub and King talk about this book, it's like they're talking about two different books. Stephen King, when he talks about the Talisman, talks about how much fun it was writing it and being in the world, whereas Peter Straub 
talks about the literary merit of the piece, and that's the, that com, that that completely that is the both the the problem and the reason these two guys don't go together. They're like oil and water um, for me, anyways. Now I know there's a bunch of you who en who enjoy this, enjoy this book. This is your favorite Stephen King book. Um, same with the Eyes of the Dragon. I don't personally understand it, but you do you. Um, there is a section in here that that adds to uh, the argument that Peter Straub is not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> uh, Cody, calm down. Uh, but uh, there's there's so something about uh, the toward toward the end. There's all I'm going to call it is the knights segment, um, and that whole that whole section is written by Peter Straub. Um, Peter Straub likes to joke on, well, actually, no, he doesn't joke. Uh, he has, he has a very deep-seated, um, animosity toward people who, who think that, you know, only Stephen King wrote the book, which is fair, of course, um, because whenever they talk about the movie, they talk about, you know, The Talisman by Stephen King, and rarely is his name ever added to that list, even though he had, I would say he had more of a hand in this book, um, than Stephen King did, uh, and I think that was... I think that was part of the reason why Stephen King decided he wasn't going, or, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. I mean, Jason's dead, we're never going to, or, or Jason goes to hell, you know, we're never going to see another one, and then King comes out and does another one. Just like we're never going to get another Castle Rock story after Needful Things, then we get Gwendy's button box, and so on and so forth. Um, oh, by the way, I'd love to hear the community's uh, point of view on the new Gwendy's novel, Gwendy's Lucky Feather. Uh, written by Chismar only. Um, I would love to hear what the community has to think about that down there in the comments below. Be nice if your opinion is negative, and if your opinion is positive, that's great. You don't have to change anything. But if you're going to be negative, at least be nice. I don't have the most positive, um, but I think it's just a skept being a, a skeptical King fan. I don't have the most positive aspect. It, honestly, if I'm, if I'm completely 100% honest, it feels like someone's milking something. But... I have not read it, and I will read it, and I will choose for myself to, you know, to figure that out when we get there. But back to the talisman. Um, there, there's a, a lot of illusion. If you're going to be reading this for the first time, and you're here for the no spoilers, I want you to pay attention to two things specifically. Um, one thing is the color green. Um, after you read the novel, or if you watch my Thursday Theorist before you read it, um, there will be spoilers throughout, though, tomorrow. Um... Pay, I want you to pay attention to the color green, and I also want you to pay attention to the aspect of twinner, the uh, a twinner. As far as I know, as far as I'm concerned, this is the first time the terminology pops up is in this book. How every single character has an opposing, uh, not an opposing, but has a different version of himself because of the way he caused the wheel and all that stuff. But uh. Actually, that's that's not, it's the it's still still a multiverse kind of thing. Cause will just mean well, I I can't say that either because that's a spoiler. But the book uh, ties in very heavily to the Stephen King universe. I don't know if there's any nods to Peter Straub stuff. I'm not uh, as well read uh, as far as Peter Straub is concerned, but uh, I know that there's nods throughout. In fact, and if 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 you don't like people writing in books, you're going to be severely triggered right now. So look away, children. Look away. Uh, I, I have notes all throughout the back of the book. Um, this is my uh, thrift store 25 cent copy. Um, I, I buy, I have a whole row of them up there. If you guys seen my paperback, uh, not book haul, my paperback uh, King collection. Um, all those books up there I got super, super stupid cheap just so I could write in them and take notes. But uh, there's a, there's loose references to, to Blaze, which was a trunk novel from way back in the way back. Uh, let's see here, there's, uh, mentions of, there's allusions to the Horn of Eld, uh, there's, uh, 19 sprinkled all, and this isn't, if you have not read the majority of Stephen King stuff, it's probably not, a lot of these little things are probably not going to resonate with you, but I also think that this book was a catalyst for all that stuff. Around this time, Stephen King was working on this book, he was working on The Wastelands, he was working on It, he was working on all these different things that became 
the connection for, in fact, I think he says, I can't remember in what intro he said, I think it's Nightmares and Dreamscapes, I want to say it is, um, in the forward, where he talks about how he was working on uh, The Wastelands, and it gave him the final connect for It, uh, his novel It. Um, and he was working on this book around the same time as well. I believe it's 84. Let me, let me check one more time before, uh, before I get fact checked into oblivion. Yeah, uh, 1984 is when this book came out. It came out in, uh, 86, I believe, but he had been working on it since 81. Um, and then The Wastelands, I'm not sure exactly. I guess we could just go ahead and check, couldn't we? Um, since we're, nope, my, my version is wrapped. Sorry, it's actually sealed. See? It's a sealed copy. So I'm not going to get into that. Even though people tell me to, 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 un, to unseal them because it causes, like, you know, creases and whatnot. Anyways, but uh, this is a very... I, I don't like this book because in the middle... If you got this far, um, I don't like this book because in the middle of the book, it just comes to a halt while these two authors go back and forth with all this superfluous information. Um... And it just keeps going and keeps going. And I, I, to, there's one point in time where I where I rage quit it. Uh, and then this reread, it took me three months to read this book. This is what you guys have been waiting on for me to finish this one. And I still got to get through Black House. But when people ask me whether or not I like this book, what I say is it's okay. It is the most okay book in all of Stephen King's work. I can do without it. I can do with it. There's absolutely nothing in this book that connects the world as a whole that isn't in other books. There is one unique twist that uh, that connects that I don't think anyone has talked about. And because I read the, these two books back to back, it helped. Uh, so I might reorganize my extended Dark Tower list um, and update it yet again. I know people are going, wait a second, wait a second. Yes, especially Sarah. You didn't tell me I need to read this. This list is always, always evolving um, because I constantly am finding new connections and I'm constantly going, hey, it would have been better had I read that before this or so on and so forth. That's also why I recommend everybody, if you're getting into Stephen King, start at the beginning. Start with Carrie and go complete through the Bachman books, all that stuff, in order of publication. That doesn't mean you're going to get them in the order they were written, but it'll be good enough because he's updated the books, you know, throughout throughout the years. Especially with the stand, there's three different versions of that book. Uh, one in, uh, well, I'm, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, but I know one happens in the '80s, one happens in the '90s. There's another one in the middle somewhere where they updated it, just you know, like five years instead of ten years. There's a whole bunch of crazy crap that went on in the stand. But have you read the Talisman? What do you think about the book? Um, and I know this review is kind of ranty and all over the place, but it's kind of mood I'm in. Um, have you read it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Um, if you are going to comment and say that you liked it, let me know why. Um, let me know what it is about the middle section, especially, that you liked. Um, and I'm not talking just about the wolf set. I'm there, there's a whole chunk of book here. You got 735 pages here, and there's only really three big events to the entire book. That blows my mind. It's as if, if the stand where, you know, this thousand page book only happened in one town. <coughs> Fireman. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it, it, it's on par with that. Not enough happens, I don't think. And I think part of that reason is because Straub and King were going back and forth, either trying to out-literary each other, uh, which is hilarious, um, or because they, they didn't know where they were going to go. Um, I don't know if Straub is a pantser or not, or if he plots out his novels. I know Stephen King, the only book he ever plotted, I believe, was Rose Matter. Um, I could be wrong. Let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Um, uh, and Blue, if you're watching this, I don't think I know uh, what you think of this book. So please, let me know your history with this one. I'd love to hear from you, brother. Anyways, until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Stephen King book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!